Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Webb, and I'm a staff software engineer at Intuit, working on QuickBooks within our Australian office. At Intuit, we serve more than 100 million customers around the globe, and our mission is to put more money in consumers' and small businesses' pockets through our products like TurboTax, Credit Karma, QuickBooks, and MailChimp. We have a long history with Storybook, both with our in-house design systems and a number of open source contributions we've published for Storybook that you can find over on our GitHub. Today, however, I'm going to share a little bit about how my team has used Storybook to build complete application features in isolation from our backend systems and how that's enabled us to deliver features to customers much faster. What I've seen on past projects is front-end engineers can get really slowed down by two things. First, getting back-end set up to reproduce data that will create certain states in the UI, and then driving the UIs in browser to reproduce the scenario they're working on in code. So here's a specific example. We maintain a feature that allows our customers to upgrade their existing QuickBooks subscription, subscription with our payroll feature. To make changes to this feature in our dev environment and really test it out fully, we need to create 57 different types of test companies to check subtle differences in the code between them. Then with each test company, we need to launch the UI, interact with it until it's in the state we need, until we can see the effects of our code changes. So because this particular feature activates an external API, that means running this setup work over and over again each time. So this is where Storybook comes in. As we all know, Storybook excels at capturing or freezing UI components in various states. But what if you wanted to capture your whole application in a specific state just to work on a specific part of the code, like our payroll feature that I just showed? So the approach we've taken is to bring a mock backend directly into Storybook to quickly reproduce these kinds of scenarios. There are two great options for this, Mirage.js and Mock Service Worker, which both provide mechanisms to intercept HTTP traffic, allowing you to code repeatable backend responses to your application. Here's a simplified example of how we define those backend responses in our stories. So this is a fairly straightforward story file. First thing to notice here is that the story is based on the root of our whole application. So we're rendering the full React code base here. In fact, every one of our story templates looks the same. We render the full application each time. Where things get interesting is via a custom decorator we've built that allows engineers to specify backend request handlers per story. Before I get to that, though, let me show you how engineers interact with it at a story level. So we leverage the story's parameters to allow these HTTP handlers to be declared per backend API, allowing us to code specific responses to any calls the application makes. In this example, I'm just returning static data, but I could easily provide a kind of mini server impl implementation here that responds to requests that would actually mutate data in the real backend and return those changes back through any subsequent data fetch requests. So with this setup running, the application will run within Storybook and any API requests will be intercepted by Mirage, match with our story request handlers, and return to the application's fetch code transparently. So our code won't know it's not calling a real backend. Without going into too much detail on Mirage, you get console logging that shows you the intercepted requests and also logging where your code might be making requests you haven't handled yet. So you can spot those and code the missing mock handlers you need. So this frees up front-end engineers to code up any kind of backend data scenario they need. All those time-consuming setup cases I mentioned earlier are where this saves us a lot of time. Another great benefit here is the really hard to reproduce scenarios such as server errors. You can code stories just to see what your application does when your backend returns responses like unauthorized or server error HTTP codes, which is a lot quicker than tearing down your development environment to reproduce an error. This also insulates your front-end teams against change in your development environments. 
So if you're trying to manage breaking API changes or other issues, engineers can code in isolation within Storybook. We've even used this to start work on a project with no backend, defining API contracts first, then having both back and front-end teams build code simultaneously that can be integrated together later on in the project. Here's a simplified version of the Storybook decorator that we use for Mirage. So this is set up globally in Storybook. And as you can see, it looks for that Mirage handlers parameter on each story, then enumerates all the endpoints and handlers the story declares, registering those with Mirage to intercept HTTP requests and return the corresponding handler responses back. One of Storybook's most exciting features for me is interactions. If you're new to it, this lets you define a play method on your stories that you can use to drive your stories UI using the standard Jest and React testing library APIs. You can also define standard Jest assertions for how you expect your story UI to respond to both user input and backend responses. So combined with the mock backend setup, you have an environment where you can build, validate, and test very specific user scenarios within your application quickly. This brings a whole bunch of benefits to your software development lifecycle. First, you can use those interactions to kind of fast forward your UI to specific states. So if you're adding functionality at the end of a multi-step process, this can gut, cut down on all those repetitive UI interactions engineers have to make to see their code changes run. Second, by including interactions within your overall CI pipeline, you get co-coverage co over your investment in Storybook. This is really critical for me because as Storybooks start to grow, they face the same problems as the underlying application code pieces can without sufficient test coverage. Parts will break and you won't know about it. With, with interactions, you can protect both your stories and the underlying code simultaneously. Third, because interactions run directly in Storybook, this gives engineers the real user interface to debug. If tests aren't working as expected, you have all the browser tools at your disposal to inspect DOM state and figure out why an element can't be found, for example. So here's how all this looks pulled together. We start our application template to render the full application. Using our Mirage setup, we define story-specific backend responses to create certain states within the UI. Then finally, we can leverage Storybook interactions to define specific user behavior that, that drives the outcomes we expect from our applications. This setup with Storybook makes a huge difference to our build time. With Mirage, we can reproduce user scenarios and fix bugs quickly. Adding interactions on top, we gain co-coverage over both code and stories and provide an environment to engineers that can make tests easier to debug. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of Storybook Day.